Hi, I'm Seth with Land of House. Thank you so much for joining the Shed Build series. In this video, I'm going to be installing the soffit, fascia, and the trim. All of these are kind of finishing up the building here. And the fascia and soffit will go here on this side. It will protect that untreated board and also prevent bugs and birds and things from getting up under there. And then the trim will go around the window and on the corners. And then also here on the front door to uh, keep this from being seen and just make it a lot prettier. So let's go ahead and jump into this build. A quick disclaimer, I am not a professional, just a homeowner with a YouTube channel building a shed. So use this video for entertainment purposes and contact a professional before you begin your build. Let's work on the soffit first. I'm gonna be using more of the concrete board siding. This is a 12 foot piece and this will go up here to hide the soffit. Now, I've actually made a little jig that will go up here and hold this in place because this stuff is known for breaking if you don't support it well. So, this right here will just be screwed onto the side and it will give us a little channel to hold this up. I can move the ladder over here and start on this side. But the problem is this stuff is too wide. So let me do some measuring and we will have to cut this down with the angle grinder to get it installed up under here. It's a bit awkward to film up under here because of the lighting, but uh, I've got my tape measure and I'm just measuring my tails of the trusses. And it looks like most of them are at seven inches. So if I do six and a quarter, I will be able to make up for this mistake I did right here. Um, so I wanna go ahead and cut this hardy board down to six and a quarter. This siding comes in seven and a quarter, so I'm using the notch in my speed square to remove one inch off of this. So I can just place the pencil into that notch and then slide this on down to make the mark. I'm gonna use the angle grinder to score this hardy board and then I can snap off the piece I don't need. I'm gonna be cutting a lot of it, so earplugs, mask, and then face shield while I'm cutting all of this. Here's where it gets a little tricky. I need to pop off that little edge there. So I've got it supported on both sides by a two by four. Okay, hopefully you can see what's going on. I have got the piece that we just cut down and I'm going to set it up in the little support jig that was made. Hopefully, I'd be sad if I broke this piece because I have just enough to get this job done. There's one end. I think that's working out decent. All right. I got this full side done here on the soffit. There was quite a sizable gap under here. I just uh, was off on my uh, rafter tails here on the trusses. Um, so what I'll do is probably take a strip of Miratech trim and just go the full length of the building to totally close that up. The next piece that I did down here turned out a lot better. As you can see, it um, really fits that piece nice and comes all the way down here to the end. Now, it's time to get the fascia on, which is the board that goes on this side here, all the way across. And I want this to continue down to the end, so it's gonna be a little bit further. And so to start over here, I've got the uh, little support piece that I built right there. So I can set it up on that and then get it attached over here with the ladder. It's very awkward doing this alone here. Definitely recommend using a friend or family member 
to get this step done. I'm going to try and set it up on top of the ladder and then sneak the other end up onto that support that I've got there. Yeah. Yep. I may have to put a little lip on my support down there because it's not going to keep this good enough. All right, take two. I added a little lip to the edge of my support so it will not allow the, uh, the board to slide off of there, hopefully. First side is totally done, except for having to come back and fix this big gap under here. I just needed an extra two feet at the end to complete that little section. And of course I didn't have to use the, uh, the soffit there because there's nothing to attach to. But uh, that looks nice. Now I'm hoping that back here on the other side where I took more caution in setting the length of my trusses, that I won't have to do any of the cutting I just have to uh, hold it up here and get it installed, but I will have to measure and uh, see how well I did on that. I'm going to work on that fascia and soffit without you, but what we can do is work on the trim here on the front door. So notice how the Tyvek and the untreated lumber is exposed. We're going to be using some Miratech to come up real close to that out here, and then probably another piece over here, we'll see, to um, finish that out. Let the camera adjust to the dark here. So this is the Miratech. This is the Miratech. It's a compressed board that supposedly doesn't rot. Um, it looks like it's three quarters inch and 16 foot long. So let's pull that out here and do some cutting. Let's see what our first cut needs to be. 79 and a half inches measure over here as well. We'll cut these at the same time. 79 and a half. All right, I'm going to be putting the first board here underneath. Had about an eighth of an inch to spare, which is pretty good tolerance for me. And I want to get this close to the door, but not totally touching. That way it doesn't interfere with the door opening. So I'm going to come back somewhere around uh, an eighth of an inch or so. Before I do any more, I'm gonna make sure the door opens and closes just fine. It shouldn't have any issues. Yeah, totally fine. We'll go ahead and continue locking down that piece with some more screws. That side trim is looking so nice. So I'm gonna do one piece on the inside here. Looks like we need 76 and a half inside. I'll have to buy some more of this uh, trim, but I'm gonna also put a piece up here that will extend past these pieces. And there is an inch and a half on the side of the trim on the sides. So I'll put another piece over there as well, and it'll wrap all this up nicely. All right, I'm gonna close this other door here so I can make sure I don't go too far in there. But this piece should fit in here nice and evenly. I figured while we're doing trim, might as well get the window done. So the side pieces will go up to the top of the window. The top will come out past those. And then on the bottom, they will extend one piece of trim width down to the bottom. And then so the bottom will just have one piece that comes up directly under the sill. Anyway, I'll go ahead and show you what that means. So the window itself is 35 and three quarter. So I need to add three and a half to that. Take the first side piece, place it directly against the window, flush with the top, and I'm gonna screw that in. The top piece I already had cut at this length, so I'm going to let it overhang the side of the window evenly on both sides. Okay. 
And the last of the window trim goes up under here, just like that. That looks really good. I could have come down a little bit further on this piece, sadly, but uh, it is what it is. That should do quite nicely though. Anyway, it just adds a nice finishing touch to it. I picked up some more of the Miratec trim to go here on the door. So it's gonna go from the bottom down here up to the same level as this. And then the piece here will go over that just a little bit, um, maybe out an inch or so, just like we did with the window. Um, so it's gonna look pretty nice, I think, to have all of that fully covered. So since you've already seen this on the window, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that out and I'll show you what it looks like here in a moment. The trim here on the front door is now complete. Now, later on I'm gonna have to come back and do some painting, but for now, it looks so much better than having that exposed Tyvek. Now it's time to put a piece of this Miratec trim up here under the eave where I messed up uh, on my trusses. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a single piece um, flat ways up there and it will skirt the whole side of the building and cover up this uh, big nasty hole here. I've got a 16 foot piece of Miratec and I placed a two by four against the wall to help me hold this up. Hopefully I won't drop it. But I'm uh, basically just matching this up. Whoa. Fell off my two by four. Oh, come back. Oh. I was able to get the 16 foot piece installed. Here is a four piece to wrap it up. If all you can see is a black void, I'm sorry. Uh, the lighting here is quite sharp at the end of November. But uh, I'm just holding up this Miratec board, uh, putting some two and a half inch screws on here and just get it locked down nice and tight. One thing that I mentioned previously that I had not taken into consideration is that I have an exposed, untreated uh, two by six here and that needs to be covered up. So what I've got going on here is I've cut this piece of trim that has uh, four inches down here, 12 inches up top, and this hopefully will be able to fit in this spot underneath the uh, rake trim here, and we'll cover that up right there just enough that it will be uh, protected from the elements. So let's go ahead and stick it under here and then use a couple of the metal roofing screws to lock that down over top of it. All right, I'm just taking this piece, I'm gonna stick it up under here. I guess I should also fold back the roof underlayment to make that look as pretty as possible. Now that the door trim is done, there's just one last thing to do, and that is the trim on the corners. So as you can see, the Tyvek is showing underneath here. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult here. I should have added this a little bit further in, but I didn't. So what we're gonna do is cut down some of the scrap pieces of the uh, siding here, the hardy board, and it's gonna be about three inch strips. So I'll cut little pieces here that'll go slightly over, and this side will go and meet up as well. And it'll just hide those corners, and that will be the end of the trim here on the shed. I'm gonna start off by using this three inch piece. I'm gonna push the top up to the soffit up there, and then I'm gonna use a speed square to make sure that it is flush with the side of the building. And then I'm just gonna use some two inch screws to get this into position. Let's see if I can hold it up with a knee Make sure we're flush here. I cut one piece here that should fit nicely underneath the support of the roof. I'm so tired of cutting this hardy board. Let me show you what I have so far. I've got this corner on the bottom done there and up the side. Um, the piece cracked right here because the uh, soffit up there was uh, angled and it caught it, so messed up there a bit. But I also have the other corners done up to that same point. And so, 
I'm so tired of cutting this stuff and I'm actually out of my straight edge pieces uh, except for one little piece here which I'm going to be using in the back above the wooden supports because the wooden supports only go to so high so I'm going to use that piece for the rest of that but here's what happened I bought three tubes no four tubes too many of the liquid nails and so what I'm going to do is basically just fill the gap here with this stuff and then paint over it will it look the best as it could probably not but will it be very functional yes yes it will it'll cover up the tyvek and be just fine so let's put some of this on real quick i'm just going to apply this generously in this crack and fill it up here the shed looks so nice i am very pleased with it so far i was able to put some of that liquid nails in this crack i'm going to come back with some other caulking and just fill it in the rest of the way and then whenever it's painted it should look pretty good i won't be able to paint until the spring because it's getting down in the low 30s at night sometimes high 20s so the time of painting is gone this side over here got the corners looking nice i put a little bit of that uh, liquid nails in there and then i got the top corner bit up there the door is done and uh, it's just looking nice all the way around now there are tons of things that could be done to this building but for the scope of this short series the last thing that i want to do is remove the exposed uh, house wrap or tyvek that goes all the way around the parameter of the building I got the Tyvek cut off around the parameter of the whole shed here, and it is looking pretty good. I'll probably come back and trim up a little bit more. Uh, it's just kind of a, a quick job tonight. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. It's really nice to have the soffit, fascia, trim, and Tyvek all taken care of here on the shed build. Also, if you will stick tuned to the next video, I will do an overview of the whole place and also tell you about what's to come here in this shed. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.